To solve this polynomial, we first need to convert both of our decimals into whole numbers. And to do that, we'll have to find a number that we can multiply to everything throughout the equation to keep everything balanced. So how do we figure out what number we should use? Well, let's look at 0 0.2 and 1.2, the two numbers that we need to convert into whole numbers. If we were to convert a decimal into a whole number, we would want our decimal to be some whole number, 0. 0.0. So 6.0, 5.0, 4.0, because all of those would read as 6, 5, and 4 as whole numbers. So what we can do to figure out how to change these decimals into numbers like those is temporarily move the decimal place one place to the right. So these numbers would become 2 and 12. What number, what identical number could we multiply to both 2 and 12 to get two numbers that have 0 as their second digit? And that number would be 5. 2 times 5 will give us 10 and 12 times 5 will give us 60. So now if we go back to our original 0 0.2 and 1.2 and multiply them by 5, we would get, instead of 10, it would be 1.0, and instead of 60, it would be 6.0. So now we can go rewrite our equation and make sure, remember, to do uh, the multiplication by 5 to every single term inside of this equation. So we would have 0 0.2 times 5 gives us 1.0 x squared plus 5 times x would give us 5x. Then 5 times negative 1.2 would give us a negative 6.0. And then 5 times 0 is just going to give us 0. Now let's simplify. 1 times x squared would just give us x squared plus 5x minus 6.0, we can just write as 6 equals 0. Now we have a much more manageable polynomial for us to solve. So let's start. We need to find a number that would add, or excuse me, two numbers that would add together to give us our b value, which is equal to 5, and multiply together to give us a times c, which would be 1 times negative 6 or negative 6. So let's take a look at all of the factors of negative 6. We'd have 1 and 6, 2 and 3, and 3 is already covered, so we're done with the factor tree there. If we look between each of these pairs, 1 and 6 has the potential to add or subtract to give us 5. What combination, however, we know we definitely need at least one negative sign so that we can have our negative 6, and that negative sign should be on 1. Because when we're adding, the greatest number carries the sign, so the greatest number in this pair, which is 6, needs to be positive. So now we can go through and we can factor this polynomial x plus 6 and x minus 1. And both of these binomials are equal to 0. So now we can separate each of these binomials out, we have x plus 6 is equal to 0, and then we have x minus 1 is equal to 0. We need to solve both of these equations. Starting with this one over here, x is being added to 6, so the opposite operation is to subtract 6 from both sides. These 6s will cancel, leaving us with x is equal to negative 6. At this point, there's only one answer choice that has negative 6 as a correct option, and that is the last choice. That is enough to mark that and move on with the rest of the test, but for the sake of the video, I'll go ahead and finish the problem. For this next one, 1 is being subtracted from x, so the opposite operation is to add 1 to both sides. These will cancel, giving us x is equal to 1. Making the last answer choice, answer choice D, our correct answer.